Do a good job for you this morning. Um, don't have anything from Heritage Happenings that I recall having read it, but please, we're still collecting water for Phoenix Rescue Mission, and we still have a list of items out there for Heart for their back-to-school drive, so your participation in those is always welcome and needed. This morning. So, welcome and... Yes. Okay, so the knitters are not meeting at the coffee shop. If you're participating and need to know where to meet, see Carol. Okay. Anything else? Good morning. Would you please join me in the call to worship? The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord even as we put our hope in you. Join me in the morning prayer, please. God of eternal promises, you have been with your people in all times and places. You have called us and we have responded. Open us to your life-giving grace. Empower us with a faith that supports us when we feel unsure. There's a chance just to make a need change and reminds us that you are always near. Amen. And our hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness in your hymnal number 39.
and our call to confession. Even when we are unfaithful, God still loves us and waits in mercy to forgive. Trusting in the promises given at our baptism, let us confess our sin before God and one another. And if you will please notice in our prayer of confession, it is a sung response. So we'll all read the part in bold and then sing the response. God of our past, present, and future, we put our faith and hope in you for a future that is yet to be seen. When we want it all now, may we find your kingdom growing piece by piece, word by word, and act by act. Forgive our impatience, O God. When we want immediate results, remind us of the slow unfolding faith, day by day, prayer by prayer, generation to generation. Forgive our impatience, O God. Our assurance of forgiveness comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Know that God's forgiveness is beyond our understanding, but it is as real as the air we breathe. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And our hymn is number six. One six in a hymnal, our God is an awesome God. be with you and also with you. So we have some prayers today that have come into the site. So um, please pray for Sandra and her family who are trying to sell their house due to a bad financial situation. The husband is out of work, and Sandra and the children have some chronic health problems. And here are prayers this morning for, for all of us, and I invite you to say a silent prayer for those that you know of that need some support and some uplifting um, through God. O oh God, your blessings are as plentiful as the stars above and as numerous as the grains of sand along the seashore. We come before you with grateful hearts as we pray for the church and the world. We pray for wisdom and guidance for all people and leaders of this world, that they may foster peace and justice and serve the common good. We pray for your church, 
that by your grace and our faith, we may serve you with constancy and love. We pray for those who are sick or suffer any need, that they would know your healing strength and find comfort through our faithful care. Help us to protect the goodness of your creation, that all may enjoy the precious blessings of this world as foretaste of the next. We remember those who have died and look to that heavenly city where with you and all your saints we will enter the everlasting heritage of your faithful sons and daughters. Holy God, steadfast and true, on you our hope is founded. Receive the prayers of your faithful people, for our hearts are gladdened by our trust in you. Hear us now as we pray with confidence the prayer our Lord Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand in the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
and faith in what we do not see is that Karen and Jerry are having a great time, resting, relaxing, and regenerating. How would you define the word faith? It's not an easy word to define, especially when it comes to our faith in God. Faith is a gift from God, and anything from God is far more than meets the eye. The writers of Hebrew, the writer of Hebrews, gives us a definition of faith that gives us some insight into the mysterious power of faith to see things we cannot see. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. What are the things that we hope for? We hope for the day when there's no violence in our world. We hope for peace on earth. We hope that cancer and viruses and every other disease be cast out of our bodies and out of this world. We hope for friends and family with addictions to be strong enough to fight the disease that destroys them and everyone else. We hope that sex slave trades will be brought to an end. We hope for a graceful solution to illegal immigration and compassion for those who cross legally. We hope for all to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. So many hopes and dreams. But what we need to understand is that these hopes are not just dreams. These are the kinds of things God has promised. Peace, Justice, mercy, love, salvation, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more grieving. Faith is not just having assurance or confidence that things will be all right. The word assurance in the Greek is hypostasis. That same word was used by the writer of Hebrews 1.3 when he wrote, Jesus is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, or God's hypostasis. Jesus is the very reality of God's presence. When we use that same translation in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says that faith is the very being, or the very real existence, of God's promise. Faith is more than just confidence, that inner knowing that things will be all right when hell is, all hell is breaking loose around us and in our world. It's more than the, that inner knowing that all the chaos and evil in the world that destroys human life will one day be over and that God's promises will finally be fulfilled. Faith is the reality of God's promises, moving as a mighty force and operating behind enemy lines today, right now, just as it has been moving throughout history and will continue to the end of the age. By faith, we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We pray to see in the present the reality of what awaits us in eternity. God's promises are our sure and certain hope. When we hear the news, witness tragedy, experience tragedy for ourselves, we see that there's trouble all around us. But to the eye of faith, another reality can be seen. To the eye of faith, the world is not going to hell in a handbasket. To the eye of faith, what God has ordered and ordained, this world and everything in it, God is sustaining by all God's hidden providence. Faith is the ability to see what we cannot see with the natural eye. It's being able to see the substance of what God has promised us in the here and now. What if we truly believed 
that faith makes real in the here and now those things of God thought of as only in the future. Without faith, we would hide ourselves in the darkness. We would give up and not bother trying to bring God's good kingdom to earth. We'd stop collecting water for the Phoenix Rescue Mission, food for the Agua Fria Food Bank, and for helping Hart and their at-risk teens. We would think more of ourself than we do of others. Faith can move mountains when we step out with God who leads us to embody the promises he has made. That's what Abraham and Sarah did. Abraham placed his hand in God's and let God lead him on a journey. He didn't know where he was going. He trusted God's promises as outlandish as they seemed to be. Granted, Abraham and Eris and Sarah stumbled and blamed and complained along the way, just like we do, but in the end, they never gave up. Abraham and Sarah led the way for others to follow in their footsteps. God sent another and another until his own son was sent ahead to lead all God's children to that heavenly city. God continues to call us on this journey of faith. To say we have faith in God, but consider that it is God who has faith in us. God works his faithfulness through us. Every time we help someone in need, lift up another in prayer, offer a kind word, do a work of mercy, help the oppressed, advocate for the helpless, give food to the hungry, we embody the promises of God and give others the eyes to see what we see by faith. Faith is the hypostasis, the very real existence of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We'll end with a story about Jack. Jack was walking along a steep cliff one day when he got too close to the edge and fell. On the way down, he grabbed a branch, which temporarily stopped his fall. He looked down, and to his horror, he saw that it was more than a thousand feet to the ground below. He couldn't hang on to the branch forever, and there was no way for him to climb up, so Jack began yelling for help, hoping that someone passing by would hear him and lower a rope or something. Help! 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 Anyone up there? Help! He yelled for a long time, but no one heard him. He was about to give up when he heard a voice. Jack? Jack, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I'm down here. I can see you, Jack. Are you all right? Yes, but who are you? Where are you? I'm the Lord, Jack. I'm everywhere. The Lord, you mean God? That's me. God, please help me. I promise if you get me down from here, I'll stop sinning. I'll be a really good person. I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Easy on the promises, Jack. Let's get you out of this trouble, and then we can talk. Now here's what I want you to do. Listen carefully. I'll do anything, Lord. Just tell me what to do. Okay. Let go of the branch. What? I said, let go of the branch. Just trust me. Let go. There was a long silence. Finally, Jack yelled, Help! Help! Is there anyone else up there? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. May you see with the eyes of faith, and in doing so, help others to see the promises of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
this morning. We'll do teachers and the others that, that are adults in schools as well next. Great God, we thank you for our children and youth. Keep them safe to and from school and while they're in the classroom. Bless them as they study. Grant them curiosity, imagination, and patience enough to wait and work for insight. Help them to doubt with courage and to question for understanding. Bless them with hearts of kindness that they might be kind to others, especially when others do not show the same to them. Fill them with your spirit to remind them of Jesus and his teachings of love. Amen. Now join me as we bless teachers and all the other adults who work in schools with students. Almighty God, thank you for the men and women who teach, administer, counsel, and work in cafeterias, drive buses, janitors, and all the support staff. Bless and help these servants to be examples of your word so that the youth they serve will experience your love through them. Help them not to be so preoccupied with their purposes that they fail to hear the children's voices or pay attention to their special needs. Bless them with calm strength and patient wisdom throughout the school year. Give them an ear to listen and a heart to love, even as in Jesus Christ you have loved us, your grown-up and wayward children. Amen. And um, as we make our offerings, uh, as always, we offer ourselves first. There's a basket in the back. We're not passing the basket. So our invitation this morning is, where your treasure is, Jesus says, there your heart will also be. In our offering, we give not only our give, gifts, but we offer ourselves to the Lord once again. So let us give from our hearts to build up the community of faith. Was beautiful. Thank you. Join me in the prayer of thanksgiving and dedication. Holy God, may these gifts we bring truly represent our treasuring of you.
morning. The song we sang was about how God uh, forgave us. Uh, he said if he was about exchanging, we wouldn't have anything to give to him so he can die for us on the cross. That's why we give praises stating that the prayers that goes with me is filled within my heart. I will forever praise and say whatever what he did for me. Amen. Now, if you'd all rise for the blessing. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us this day and every day until Christ comes to make all things well. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.